Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Career Management Center Showcase. We'll get started in just a minute or so as um, we just wait for, for everybody to join in. And definitely throughout our time today, don't hesitate to use the chat for any questions that you may have or um, comments that you may have throughout. And um, we'll try to get to all the questions. It may be at the end, but, but feel free to put those in the chat. And welcome everybody. We'll be starting in just another minute or so. Thank you for joining us for our Career Management Center showcase today. And I think we'll go ahead and get started. My name is Beverly Brocker. I'm the director of the Career Management Center for the Fowler College of Business, and we are happy to have you all join us today to learn a little bit more about our center. Basically, how this is going to work is that um, the staff of the Career Management Center, we're each going to introduce ourselves, talk a little bit about some of the resources, and then we're going to move into some Q&A with a couple of current students and a recent graduate. And we'll spend really the, the majority of the time talking with um, those three panelists because I think they have a lot to share that's going to be really valuable for you. Um, but first, we'll start out with um, our staff, and I'm going to ask Tina Tan to, um, to kick things off for us. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks, Beverly. I am Tina Tan. I am the Career Advisor in the Career Management Center, and I am a proud alum. I earned my undergraduate degree in psychology here at San Diego State, and I earned my master's degree in counseling with a specialization in career at the University of San Diego. Um, I am a board certified counselor through the National Board of Certified Counselors, and I have over 14 years of experience um, with career advising and coaching in higher education. Um, and I've been in the Career Management Center for over five years now. You can advance the slide. Okay, so some of you may recognize my name from the emails, um, the career management update emails that I send out weekly. Um, and those emails are just one of the resources that you receive from our center. You can advance the slide. We also offer assessments, as you can see here on the slides, and these assessments are exclusively for Fowler business students. And in addition to that, another resources or service that we offer, um, we offer advising appointments. And as you can see now, they are virtual one-on-one -on -one career advising appointments. And during these appointments, we can talk about any questions, concerns, or topics career related um, that you wanna discuss. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to my colleague, Greg Tannenberger, who's gonna talk about more of our resources and services. Thank you very much, Tina. Um, my name is Greg Tannenberger. I am the professional development and external relations specialist for the Career Management Center. Um, I have a Juris Doctorate degree from St. Mary's University in San Antonio, Texas. In addition, I currently serve on the Board of Management for the Armed Services YMCA here in San Diego. I joined SSU six years ago after a successful career in marketing management for Caesars Entertainment and the Walt Disney Travel Company. In my current role, I get the opportunity to meet with senior level business executives at both large and small companies from around the country. And I discuss with them their business challenges, what they're facing and how our students such as yourselves um, can help meet those challenges. I also get the privilege of helping our graduate students at the Fowler College of Business with their career development strategies. Some of the most commonly requested meetings uh, that we get at the Career Management Center are for resume reviews, cover letter reviews, and LinkedIn critiques. Um, so even if you already have a great resume, cover letter, or LinkedIn profile, uh, my team and I can still help you to learn how to make it even more competitive uh, through professional branding and through the use of strong accomplishment statements. Um, so I'd love for an opportunity to sit down and, and chat with you. Um, if you're looking uh, for help in any of these areas, just schedule an appointment with my team through Handshake. Um, now I'd like to introduce my colleague, Jill Lackey. Hi, thanks, Greg. 
As Greg mentioned, I am Jill Lackey. I'm the Business and Career Development Coordinator for the Career Management Center and Career Services. So I have the privilege of working with Fowler students both in physically and virtually in the building as well as with Career Services. I am a product of the CSU. I have a bachelor's degree in mass communications and hold my master's in educational counseling with an emphasis in student affairs. Um, I am also a lifelong learner as my coworkers are particularly participating in many memberships and continually learning about best practices and resources to help you stay informed um, and continually educated in your professional advancement. Some of those great resources we have can be found actually on our website. Um, did you know that in Blackboard, as a Fowler student, you have a career resources tab specifically for you with resources for your major, such as um, industry specific resumes, cover letters, uh, mock interview samples, as well as a great newly developed career success handbook that all Fowler students have access to. Another great resource that we do have virtually um, is Handshake. So I believe we're gonna talk about that on the next slide. Handshake is a great way, as Greg mentioned, to make appointments with career advisors, um, to schedule a quick 30 minute or 60 minute session to discuss your job and internship search. Um, you can research employers through Handshakes, schedule appointments, find our virtual career fairs and events right now. So those are some great online resources available through the Career Management Center. Now I will introduce my colleague, Michelle. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Sve. I'm the Internship and Career Fair Coordinator for the Fowler College of Business. I'm also a proud, of, proud alum. Um, I got my BA in Sociology from SDSU. I also have my Master's in Counseling from the University of San Diego with an emphasis in Educational Counseling. Um, my role for you is really anything internship related. So if you need uh, tips or strategies on how to search or um, if you are planning on doing an internship for ac academic credit, then I am your go to. Um, and I have been with the Career Management Center for about five years now. Can you go ahead and advance. Okay, so our center provides a ton of services, but one of those is how to provide tips and strategies to you to search for jobs and internships while you are at San Diego State. Also, our center puts on a ton of events such as networking events and career fairs and employer sessions, um, all those to help you with your career path. And I'd like to hand it back over to the director of our center, Beverly Brocker. Thanks, Michelle. So um, I am Beverly Brocker, the director of the Career Management Center, and I've been with SDSU about six and a half years now. Um, before that, I worked in uh, career services at a law school. So all of my experience, which is now about 20 years of experience in career advising and working closely with students, finding internships and jobs, um, and all of that time has been spent either with business students or law students. So you all um, have that special place in, in my heart. And um, we have an awesome team. I feel really fortunate to be here with um, this, the rest of the staff who just introduced themselves to you. I think um, you have a super dedicated group of people and everybody here just wants to help you be successful. Some of the things that we offer that I think um, are really crucial and people don't always realize our benefits that um, that they can seek out from the career management center mock interviews and um, i think doing a practice interview interview before your real interview is something that can really set you apart and you may not even realize you need to do the practice until you're actually in the practice interview and you realize okay i i need a little bit more preparation um and a lot of times students find the, the practice interview challenging, but the real interview actually ends up feeling pretty easy because of all the preparations. So that is one thing I really recommend people take advantage of. And then we also will work with you as you negotiate your salary. So once you get the offer and you're looking at your options and maybe you're comparing things, you're researching what salaries are out there for a position at that level, we can really walk you through how to have those conversations in a way that um, is going to, you know, maximize your professionalism and, and make um, the employer really see that you've done your homework and that can be especially beneficial. 
So um, now that we have covered very quickly some of the things um, that our center offers, I want to now turn um, to our Q&As um, with a couple of, of students and a recent grad. And first we're gonna have uh, Michelle uh, come back in and um, she'll introduce the student that she'll be talking to. Okay, thanks Beverly. I have the great pleasure of introducing our first student panelist today. We have Jennifer Austin, who is a marketing major and currently a junior um, in the Fowler College of Business. Jennifer is also currently uh, interning for Dr. Multimedia as a social media marketing intern. So thanks for joining us today, Jennifer. Yeah, thanks for having I'm me. Gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and ask you a few questions about um, your experiences with uh, visiting us in the Career Management Center. So can you talk a little bit about some of the services from our office that you've used? Yeah, so I actually started um, taking advantage of the Career Management Center services um, last year. I had a one-on-one -on -one with an advisor and I was just interested about getting an internship for the summer and so I really just wanted to have some advice on where to start, what resources I can use. And um, I also brought in my resume and we had a whole resume revising session. And then I actually didn't have a LinkedIn profile either when I came in to talk to her and I, I was always like, oh, I don't need to have one. Like, I'll just wait until I have a professional job. And so she helped me start one, helped me build up on what kind of things in LinkedIn that I could um, use to my advantage. So we just had a one-on-one -on -one and from then on out, just sort of talked about what I can do to get an internship for the summer. Awesome, thank you. And what was, what would you say is the most helpful advice that you've received from our office? Um, I would say the most helpful would be the alumni tool. Um, I didn't realize that that was a thing before because I always thought that I shouldn't reach out to anybody who works in the field, but I thought it was really cool how you could just go on LinkedIn and message someone who was formerly at San Diego State or currently at San Diego State in the job industry that you want to go into and just sort of message mm -hmm. them and um, even have like a 10 minute phone call with them, just sort of saying, I'm interested in what you're doing. And I just want to know how you got in that industry. And I think I remember her saying, cause I was sort of nervous about doing that. And I think I remember her saying that people love to talk about themselves. So it's mm -hmm. not like I'm asking them to do anything crazy for me, but just a little bit of insight on how they got into the field that they did, um, was really cool. And I, that also helped me land my internship position. So yeah. Good. And tell us about your current internship at Dr. Multimedia and what are some of the things that you're learning there? Um, so it's a fully online um, social media marketing internship. And I basically work with a digital marketing, digital marketing specialist, um, the head of graphic design and head of marketing on kind of whatever they need me to do. So I'm kind of like their assistant, I guess, assistant to the head to the assistant sometimes too. And um, we do a lot of different things for help for companies because it's a healthcare marketing company. So we, um, there's like 1600 companies that we work with and we just sort of manage their social media presence and their graphic design presence because a lot of places like acupuncture, chiropractor places, they don't know how to do that. So we mm -hmm. just sort of manage that for a variety of different healthcare companies. And so I do a lot of content creation for them. So they have like a whole website of me just, um, making social media posts off of Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc. And then I also do a lot of graphic design. So if anyone needs me to make a poster for a sale that they're doing, I'll assist on that too. And then just kind of anything like little things that they need help on is what I'm sort of there for. So a lot of regular things like the content creation and the graphic design stuff. But I send emails sometimes. I sometimes have pop into the Zoom interviews with the whole or the Zoom um, the Zoom meetings with the whole company. So whatever they need help on. <laughs> awesome. And what advice would you have for students who are currently looking for an internship now, especially during this time that we're in a pandemic? Yeah, um, I would say my biggest advice and my number one is to, to be patient. Um, I probably apply to a whole, like so many um, internships for the summer, not just because I wanted to land one, but also to just sort of get used to talking about myself. Because um, especially over Zoom, you know, you kind of feel 
we are talking to a computer screen and I just thought that it would be helpful for me to, to just get used to talking about myself. And mm-hmm. I, it took me a while to fully land mine because I did um, fortunately get it through the career fair. That's how I started getting it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my second advice is to take advantage of your resources, um, especially in college. There's a lot of free resources that I don't think a lot of college students know about. And once we graduate, we won't have access to those resources like the Career Center, um, like professors, because I know professors are open to having an informational Zoom call as well. And then my last one is to make yourself stand out. Um, for me, it was taking taking initiative because um, at the career fair, when I did meet doc, Dr. Multimedia, um, I was really um, excited about getting an internship there and I wanted to, but they told me around late March, they said that they weren't gonna take any more interns because of COVID, mm-hmm. it was just like a hectic time. And so I was upset because I didn't have that opportunity, but then a month after um, I emailed them one more time and I just sort of said, I have a completely open schedule for this summer and I'm willing to work and on any hours that you need. And the CFO reached out back to me and he said, we'd love to have you a part of our team. And I think it was because of that email that I did that I got it because they weren't, they didn't have an opening. It was just sort of me taking initiative and making myself stand out from, from the rest. Awesome. Yeah. So persistence definitely pays off for sure. Yeah. Good. Well, do you have anything else you'd like to share or add? Um, I guess my one thing is just to take advantage. And even if you don't think you need any help on a resume or LinkedIn, it's always good to get another opinion. That's about it. (laughs) Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing some insights on your experience with our office. Thank you so much. All right, I am next. I have the honor to introduce Jacob Peets. He is a recent graduate and is currently an Associate Materials Analyst at Collins Aerospace. So hi, Jacob. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Of course. So just like before, we're going to ask you a few questions about your experience, starting off with how did you hear about the Career Management Center and what services did you use? Sure. Okay. So um, I actually heard a lot about the Career Management Center all throughout college, really. Um, It actually wasn't until about junior and senior year that I really started taking advantage and understanding all of the different services that were super beneficial. Um, And I started realizing this because I noticed my classmates were getting help, getting internships, getting interviews, and I'm kind of starting to lag behind. So that's really when I started taking advantage is when I heard about the success stories from my other students. Um, And then the services that I used, the two kind of main ones were the career fairs and coming in for advice. So uh, if I were to start with career fairs, the career fairs were phenomenal tools to walk around and get exposure to the business world, uh, which is something that you don't really get very often. Um, It was great to make connections. It was great to understand the kind of questions that potential companies would ask during interviews, which a lot of the times actually did happen. You know, I was looking for an analyst position. So I went and spoke with people who were looking for analysts and you kind of understand the questions you might um, get in an interview. So that was a phenomenal tool to get out there. And then the last thing was just kind of getting comfortable speaking professionally, trying to hold yourself in a professional manner. Because again, you know, I was 17 at the time and had only worked in a restaurant. I had no idea how to hold myself professionally. And so it was a great tool and learning experience, the career fair for sure. Um, And then the second piece that I really took advantage of was just coming in and getting advice. So again, I didn't really have a great resume. I didn't have a good LinkedIn. I didn't have great professional experience. So I didn't know how to communicate well. And it was kind of nerve wracking to send emails to some big wigs at companies because, you know, you want to make sure you're sounding proper. You want to make sure you're communicating well. And these were all just some simple skills that I didn't realize I needed to have, but uh, definitely learned a ton through the Career Management Center. So definitely need big thanks there. Great. And you set me up well, it's almost like you know the next question. What was the (laughs) best piece of advice that you received um, from an advisor or by interacting with the Career Management Center? The best piece of advice I received, um, and it's kind of carried me through work to this day, is to never stop asking questions. Um, 
kind of like Jennifer had mentioned, like people love to want to talk about themselves. So whether it's reaching out to ask uh, an alumni, if you can kind of get a word from them to understand what they do, if it's asking someone for assistance, you know, ask for help, ask for advice. People love to see that you care. Um, and I've even seen that in the business world, people love to see you take that initiative to really reach out out of your comfort zone. Um, so that was probably the best piece of advice I received. Great, thank you for sharing. Yeah. The next question is in relation to your roles. So how did you know that you wanted to move on from the role you had and how did you make that transition into the role you're in now? Yeah, so at the time I started getting more involved at the school with both the professors and the career management center. Um, I was working as a business development associate for an insurance firm in San Diego. Um, and once I started getting more involved, understanding some of the different resources and tools, I began to really see the different opportunities that were out there. I was kind of closed minded in that aspect. Um, I was just happy to have some sort of relevant job. And um, at that point, um, I didn't quite enjoy the work environment as much as I hoped to. And so once I started getting more involved, I really understood how much more there was out there, both from a personal growth and knowledge perspective. I wanted a career to take me a different route and I, I learned it was okay to ask these questions to kind of pursue something that's not only good for the company, but good for you as well as an individual. Um, and so making the transition was difficult because first professional internship was kind of hard to get away from, but the team at the center definitely actually helped me draft up um, a two weeks notice and all those fun things that I'd never done before. So that's kind of, the transition was difficult, but the team really helped a lot. So thank you everyone. Yeah, great to hear. Yeah. And how do you think your job at Collins Aerospace has helped you grow more now as a business professional? Oh gosh, uh, Collins Aerospace has definitely grown me in more ways than I could have ever imagined. I've only been there 10 months and to think less than a year ago, I was still taking classes and working at a restaurant at the same time. Like, um, I have grown so much thanks to Collins. Um, I never thought I would be where I professionally am today. At my position, I'm in charge of many different deliverables for kind of high level corporate people. And it's high pressure at times. It can rely on some quick data manipulation and analysis in order to provide recommendations. And so um, because of this, it, it forces you to adapt pretty quickly. I had to learn very quickly. My Excel skills were a lot worse than I thought they were. <laughs> and it's just, you have to get good at presenting and holding yourself professionally as well. Um, and so I've just grown a lot more than I ever thought I ever could. And I'm so happy for the opportunity to, that I had to uh, work at Collins these last 10 months. Great. I often see proficient and excel on resumes. Do you feel like you were proficient before or you're proficient now? I said I was proficient before. <laughs> that Seeing what I know now, that would not have been accurate. I, am <laughs> I would say I'm proficient now. I would argue that I was not back then. Thank you for being honest. I, that was a bit of a curveball. <laughs> And finally, what suggestions do you have for seniors who are looking for jobs? Um, honestly, my biggest piece of advice, Jennifer kind of touched on this as well, uh, would be to take initiative. Now more than ever, especially. Um, this was the hardest thing for me to learn going through college, but it's pretty easy to kind of take the low road, just kind of skate through classes and rely on finding a job on Indeed. You know, maybe you've seen a couple that you might be interested in. Um, and just kind of just expect that to happen once you get out of college. But until you put in that initiative, until you put in that hard work, show employers that you really want something more for yourself, you really want to benefit the company. Um, you know, it's just you're, you're, you want something that's good enough for yourself, but you don't want to just skate through. And so take the initiative, really put your foot out there. You'll end up getting a job a lot better than if you were to skate through. So, um, yeah, just, I guess, take, take initiative as Jessica, or Jennifer had mentioned. Awesome. Um, any last words before I move this on to Tina? No, I think, um, again, just put in the effort, reach out to alumni. People love to talk about themselves and see you kind of putting your foot out there. And uh, like Jennifer mentioned as well, be, definitely be patient during these times. Awesome. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you yeah, so much. And 
to everyone. Great words from Jacob, someone who succeeded well after college. So I'm going to pass it over to Tina. Thank you. Hi, all right. I have the pleasure of introducing Carolina Rodriguez, who is a current Fowler business student and her major is in management. Carolina. Hello. Hi. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to first ask you, what position did you obtain after getting help from the Career Management Center? And how um, competitive was the process? Okay, so the position I received, I was actually accepted into the 2020-2021 class of the NASPA Undergraduate Fellows Program, also known as NUF. And just to give a little background, the mission of the NASPA Undergraduate Fellows Program is to increase the number of historically dis disfranchised and underrepresented professionals in student affairs and higher education. So as a fellow, I will be mentored by a NASPA member, and she is the Associate Director of Career Services at SDSU, Rosa Elena Moreno. And as my mentor, she will help me develop a sense of what a career in student affairs and how your education might look like. And she will also provide me with knowledge and insight and understanding of the professional opportunities available in student affairs as well. And regarding the process, it was very, very competitive. I actually had to submit a lot of supplemental materials and demographic information as well. And those include the fellow questions, which is regarding why are you interested in a career in student affairs? Why would you benefit out of this program? And then the most complicated one was the mentor application. And that was because when you're applying as a fellow, you also have to apply with your mentor, your proposed mentor, and that person has to be a full-time professional with at least two years experience in postmasters. So that was definitely the hardest part and the one that I, it took me a while to get, but thanks to the Career Management Center, I was able to get that resolved. Um, another one was the unofficial transcript and a letter of recommendation. Yeah, that sounds pretty intense. <laughs> Um, um, so what service would you say that the Career Management Center um, offered that helped you to get this position? Um, the service, I love all the services from Career Management. WrestleMania, I love it. Um, but the ones that actually helped me with this position was career advising for business students and pre-grad school advising. Um, originally, I had met with Jill LeKay, and she, we actually, the first meeting was completely opposite to a different internship. It was like banking industry. And then the second meeting I met with her, I actually told her that I was interested in pursuing a master's degree in student affairs. And I told her about my job as being a store mentor and how being a tutor for foster kids really changed my perspective on the career I want to take. So she really listened to everything that I had told her and about my dreams and my purpose. So she connected me with Eunice Flores. I'm sorry if I mispronounced her name, but she helped me with the pre-grad school advising and letting me know about the whole grad school process, the financial aspect of it as well, and you know what it takes to really be in there and what I should look out for. And having that appointment and then meeting with Jill again, um, both of them recommended NASPA and they talked about that as an additional resource. And when the applications opened up, they actually sent me an email, both of them. So I was like, okay, this is my calling. And they offered all their support and help that they could. And they were just the people that really changed 
everything for me, especially Jill. I remember when I went up to her and I had lost all hope because also I received the emails when the deadline was like two days away or three days away. So I had a very short amount to submit all the paperwork. And Jill was actually the one that said, I'll help you with your letter of recommendation. She gave it to me the same day. It was just an amazing, I was so shocked with the outcome because the hardest part, like I said, was the mentor application. So I had no professional mentor to apply with. So I had kind of given up and I emailed Jill and she was like, no, do you have quick time to get on a Zoom call? Like, we'll figure it out. And she really, really, really helped me so much. Like her, the reason I got accepted is mainly a huge reason with her help. Yeah, she's pretty awesome. And I'm glad that she was able to help you as much as she did. Um, what would you say is the best piece of advice that you received from, from Jill, a career advisor, um, in the Career Management Center? The best piece of advice I received was from Jill and she told me, don't be afraid to make changes. Um, and that was because I had told her originally, I came in thinking I was just gonna get a bachelor's and work for a company and that was gonna be it. But then I really told her about how EOP influenced me and the store program. And I feel like she really listened because she also brought up NASPA, which is a great program for me to really get to know this field. And um, she just told me, like, don't be afraid to make any changes. If you switch to wanting to pursue a master's, that's totally fine and not to be afraid. Good advice. Um, what, what do you think that most students don't know about the resources that are available to them? I feel like most students don't know how impactful one appointment can really change your perspective and your future career plans. Um, I feel like sometimes career advisors can kind of see the blind spots that you don't see in your potential. And they also really want to support you and help you. Like they genuinely want to get to know you as an individual, not just the student. They want to get to know your motivations, your aspirations in life, like your big goals that you have. Um, that would be my biggest thing. Like you never know what that connection can lead to in the future. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing your experience um, with the Career Management Center and working with Jill. And I'm so glad that you were able to um, get really great advice, a great listener. Um, so is there anything else, any other tips, advice, anything else you want to share with us? I would just say that when you go meet with these career advisors, truly open up to them um tell them what your purpose is what your dreams are because you don't know how valuable those connections will be in the future so just remember they're human just as much as you are because i know sometimes as students we're like oh my god it's a formal meeting like i'm scared on what i'm gonna say but just be honest and show them who you really are also share your experiences like the struggles that you face to getting to um sdsu because opening up about what makes you you is really important and they can also see the potential that you don't see. So that would be my biggest advice. You never know what those connections can lead to. Thank you. And you're right, we are human and we do care. We're just like you guys. <laughs> um, well, thank you again for sharing that. Um, and I'm gonna hand it over to Beverly. We are going to have um, a little Q and A portion. So. Um, Thanks, Tina. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you so much to Jennifer, Jacob, and Carolina. I am, I am very inspired and motivated just by hearing the, the three of you speak about your experiences with our center. And I feel very lucky to have students and, and alumni like you. Um, I want to I want to take a question right now. Um, we have a question from the audience, and um, this person um, is a junior and wondering when to start reaching out to companies for a job after graduation, and um, the time frame that students normally are are pursuing post graduation jobs, 
And is it okay to ask for some time off to travel before starting work? So I'm, I'll answer at least part of that, which is um, as a junior, it's a great time to be looking for a summer internship with a company that has opportunities that are, that are um, likely to lead to a full-time job after graduation. So a lot of companies will use that summer internship in particular to kind of test you out as, a, as an intern and see how you do and see if you're a good fit for them. And you can also kind of test them out. So starting now as a junior to focus on a great summer internship with a company that you might want to work for after graduation is what I would recommend in, in terms of kind of starting as soon as you can, basically. So even if somebody is a sophomore, if they can be looking at internship opportunities that will help them explore and see what something is like and test it out and build the experience, that's definitely something that I would recommend. And I wanna just check in with our panelists to see if you know you all, in terms of your own um, search, have any anything additional that you may wanna to add to that. Or, or staff, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I agree. Yes, certainly. I say, you know, look at internships, apply as soon as possible, get that experience as soon as you possibly can. And I think the other question, and I lost it, um, was, um, hold on, uh, when, when do students typically start applying, you know, during their fall semester of the senior year or spring? Again, as soon as possible. Don't wait till you're a senior to start at least looking at what opportunities are out there. And if they're saying that, you know, if, if you're interest, it, interested in it, go and apply for it and see what happens. Um, don't wait. I think the sooner the better um, to start looking for internships or applying for opportunities. That's really what you should do. And Thank you, Tina. And I think, Jacob, you also had a comment. Yes, I was going to say, I don't think it's um, ever too early to start looking for internships. You know, for if, even if you're, let's just say, a freshman, you might all of a sudden get an internship somewhere where you think is going to be your dream job. You're really excited. And next thing you know, you really don't like it. And um, it's a great way to understand truly where you want to take your career. And so I think, I mean, the more exposure you have, the better because you never know one thing that you could think is your, um, your livelihood, what you want to work for is actually not that great at all. So I, I don't think there's ever a bad time to really start uh, exploring different internship opportunities. Thank you. And, and we, I'm not sure if you actually saw the, the question, but we do have a freshman who was asking, is it, is it a good time to start applying for, for internships? So um, that, was a, that was a great answer. Um, <laughs> And I mean, I think maybe maybe the thing to keep in mind is the internship that you might do as a freshman or a sophomore, you know, may not be at this, the same level of intensity as the one that you might be doing as a as a junior. But that that's okay. It's it's getting you that exposure and that opportunity to try things out and um, see what it's like and see if it's going to be a fit for you. And then um, I want to I want to jump to this question. So we have a, a transfer student who's a junior right now and doesn't have any professional work experience. Um, somebody who's had maybe like the minimum wage service industry um, jobs of that. And this person, the student is kind of starting the application process um, and, you know, concerned and all maybe the lack of professional experience. Does anybody have um, some thoughts on that one? Jennifer? Yeah. Um, so I actually, for my internship, I didn't have any professional experience, um, which I think was why I wanted to, because I am a junior now. So my internship started like this summer, this summer. So I was kind of a sophomore, kind of in the middle, like you, um, like the person who asked. Um, and I think the most, like, I didn't have any experience, but I think because I took initiative and because I was very, um, op I, had, I said to them, I, had an, I have an open schedule and I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to um, provide any help that I can is what landed me the internship job. So although you don't have any experience, it's, 
it doesn't hurt to apply and to try and to just put yourself out there because for cases like me, it worked out in the end. So, yeah. Thank you. And and one one comment that I would make as well is that this is a great reason to come in and meet with one of us in the Career Management Center because we can really help look at how you're describing that work experience. And there's, there's probably transferable skills that you have that you maybe don't even realize you have. Um, communication skills, organizational skills, all kinds of things that it's just, you know, sometimes in a matter of how you put that down on your resume and the words that you use that, you know, show how it really is a, a transferable um, type of role or some skills that would really be beneficial in the, you know, the future internship. Okay, any other comments on that, on that question before we move on to the next one? I was just um, going to say, oh, I was just going to say real quickly, um, yeah, to attend as many workshops as you can. There's a lot of internship workshops on Handshake or, yeah, workshops happening on Handshake and you can register. There's also one happening October 20th that is your transferable skills and they teach you how to talk about them. And don't ever underestimate minimum wage jobs because you can say, you can make it sound very fancy. Uh, you know, an effective communicator, you know, when you were taking orders, just things like that. There's always a way to make it sound more sophisticated. I was just going to say, yeah, just don't be afraid. Put yourself out there. And we're here to help you before you put yourself out there to be prepared. And also, um, also think about some of the, you know, the experience that you're getting in the classroom environment. It's not, you know, out in the work. Um, workforce, but it is still, you're still acquiring skills, those soft skills that are transferable. Um, you are working on projects. So think of that as experience as well. Great. And let's move on. I think this is, this is probably mainly a question for our three panelists. So what is one event or experience which amplified your perseverance to be where you are today? So I would kind of, I would maybe say that's kind of like something that motivated you or, or spurred you on to achieve the success that you've achieved so far. That one's kind of hard, uh, just because it's, it's a lot that goes into it. Um, I would say me was kind of serving as a leader and the way SDSU helped me achieve that. Like I said, one was being a mentor, I mean, an academic tutor for foster kids. That was part of my leadership minor. And like being that natural, ser like serving people um, really motivated me into, you know, the belief systems that I have, the whole philosophy of paying it forward. I'm a firm believer of that. And that is also a reason why I want to pursue a master's degree in student affairs. Um, also being a store mentor, there's actually some of my mentees in the audience today. So just really being that person that helps somebody achieve a higher essence of themselves or reach their goals further is really important. And I would say me was just being a mentor through all my different roles at SDSU. Thank you. Jennifer? Yeah. Um, I think, too, in general, in regards to, you know, getting an internship and getting a job, I feel like one of the things that kind of motiv motivated me, which I feel like shouldn't for a lot of people, but um, I did apply to a lot of internships, like, for fun, and I did get declined for a lot of them, and that kind of, in the back of my mind, my subconscious was like no like I deserve to get one and so it kind of made me like work harder in a sense and like apply for more and just improve um what what I had on my resume or the way I talked in my interviews so I this like like it's bad to say a no made me motivate me more but it kind of just made me imp want to improve myself more and then another thing that motivate I think is really important especially as college students and with COVID going on is to surround yourself with people that motivate you um 
So like all of my friends right now are also, a lot of them are business students and in the process of trying to find an internship. So when I talk with them about, you know, applying or even just a class, it kind of motivates me to do the same thing as well. So definitely surrounding yourself with people who are ambitious and have similar goals to, to you. Thank you. Jacob? Yeah, so um, I would say it's kind of hard to pinpoint one specific thing. I do remember the, the one thing that really made me want to take the initiative and start asking questions and really get involved for my career was going to a career fair and feeling just completely overwhelmed. Um, there are so many people there. They ask so many different questions. You don't know enough about the companies to ask the right questions, even though you really want to get a good career and you know this might be the place to help out. And so um, that was probably the biggest driver for motivate or what motivated me to at least feel something other than, okay, I need to actually take a step forward and really think about what I want to do. And then from there, I would agree that you just need to surround yourself with people who are willing to help you. Um, for example, Ms. Tan helped me a ton when I really had no experience whatsoever, was super overwhelmed. And she just kind of sat me down and was like, all right, let's, we'll figure this out. It's all good. And, um, you know, it's so if I had one spot, it was definitely just kind of feeling overwhelmed that I didn't really have professional experience. And then starting to, like Jennifer mentioned, surround myself around people who were willing to answer my questions and um, not, you know, it would be okay with taking the fact that I didn't really know anything. So ask questions. <laughs> it's definitely ask questions. Elves. Perfect. Excellent advice from everyone. Thank you all so much. It looks like we've we've um, got our our all their questions um, have been answered. So let's talk um, a little bit. Maybe um, we can put our slide back up. Thank you, Emma. So this is a few of the events that we have coming up through the Career Management Center, and you'll see more details um, on Handshake. You'll see more details in the weekly email that Tina sends out, but some opportunities to learn more about job search, introducing yourself, networking. Um, and we have uh, another recent grad talking um, at the What Do You Do Wednesday event. So lots of great things that are coming up. And um, we appreciate everybody for being here. Here's um, our email addresses, so you'll have our contact information. And we do, I believe, Janie, we have a brief survey. And if you complete the survey, there's some opportunities to win some fun Fowler gear. So we appreciate if you take the survey. Um, and Janie has put that link in the, in the chat. So thank you all very much for coming.